There's a new AI tool called Runway that could turn any video into a full animation just with one click. You could turn yourself into claymation. You could turn yourself into an Android robot. You could even describe in a text prompt what you want the video to be, and it will turn it into that. So to access Runway, all you have to do is go to runwayml.com. And here you could try this completely for free. You could sign up and you get some credits for free to create these type of videos. Once you log into Runway, you'll land on the dashboard here, and there's a ton of different AI tools available here. But the one I wanted to show you here is called Gen 1 Video to Video. I have a different video to show you Gen 2 Text to Video, where you turn a text prompt into a fully generated video too. I'll link that below as well. But to access Gen 1, just click here. And over here, you're gonna land on this page where you could drop a video file. Now they have some demo assets, but I recommend just using a different type of video file to turn it into something else. If you don't have any type of video file, I'll show you a website where you could get some for free. If you go to pexels.com, go under video, they have a ton of different videos that you could choose from under the videos tab. So you could download any one of these and drop it into Runway to basically get a different style. If you want something with a person, just search for model and download one of these clips. I'm gonna use one of my own clips since I do stuff on camera to show you what that looks like. So all you have to do is press upload or drag and drop a video file, and then it's gonna appear over here under your assets library. So now let me show you basically what this does. This is a video of me doing a test, so I'm gonna go ahead and double click this one. It's gonna load it up. Then over here, basically what you could do is the style references, and you have three different options to choose from. This image to image option basically lets you use a reference photo and it will use that photo to stylize your video. I'll show you this in a second. Then you have presets. This is probably the easiest place to start because you could literally see what these look like. So if you wanna turn yourself into this kind of a claymation, you could just click on this or this kind of an Android robot, you could just click on it. And then it has some settings underneath. So it says style strength. This is probably the tool that you'll use most often. So if you come over here, this controls how much it actually transforms. So if you go to zero here, I'll show you basically one that's only 5%, then I'll show you one that's 95% to show you the difference here. And then go ahead and do a preview style. This actually just gives you a glimpse of what this looks like. It won't make the video, so it won't charge any credits, but it'll basically show you what these look like before you generate them. So you get four different options. That's the Android one. So this is at 5%, let's go to 95%. And this is really nice, this preview style, because it's just generating images, not costing you anything or any of your credits to generate the video. Let me preview the style again. Now, same thing, Android, but now I'm at 95% to show you the difference. And you can see this looks really nothing like me at all. If you go way higher, you're gonna get something that's way different. So the style strength is a very useful option. The seed option is a little bit more advanced, but if you wanna get basically the same result on an upcoming generation, you wanna basically try to use the same seed. So you could copy the seed and type that in with a whole new set of prompts, for example. And then you would just press generate a video. I'll show you what these videos look like in a second because I've generated some of these. But now let me show you this one called the prompt box, which is describe your output here with a text prompt. So you could describe with text what you want out of the video. Let's see if I do tiger in a jungle to see what that gives me. I'm gonna bring this down to somewhere like 20%. Let's go ahead and preview. And this is pretty good. You get the idea here. So it's keeping the composition. So it's someone talking to camera, but it turned me into a tiger. I'm gonna show you with the image reference some more advanced options as well because there's an advanced tab I haven't shown you. So far, you have the style strength with each one and you have seed if you wanna kind of get as close as possible. Each time you get a unique seed basically that gets you as close as the original copy that you got over here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just generate one of these. And this process does take a little bit of time. I only have one or two second video here, but if you had a longer video, it will take some time. Just make sure you do this with very small clips at a time because of how much credits it uses. So when I make entire videos with this technique, I basically just select different sections of the video like four or five seconds at a time and I make a lot of cuts. And let me go ahead and press play on this. I have it on mute, but it does keep the audio from it as well. So not too bad, right? The same composition is pretty much the same as I had in my original video, right? My head's up there, there's my body, and it basically replicated that. 
and you actually in the advanced setting have some control over the background and the subject too. So let me show you the image reference and then I want to show you these advanced options inside of it too. So with the image reference, basically you could use an image. So I'll choose this one. This image is something I made in mid journey. I'm going to go ahead and preview the style. Then I want to show you these advanced options. So I have it still at 20%. I'll preview. So you get the idea. It basically put me in space. It put some kind of helmet. It doesn't really quite look like this helmet. So maybe I need to work with the style strength, but let me just show you these advanced options because it's important to understand if you're going to use gen one, you need to sometimes use these advanced options. So I'll go through them one at a time and I'll put them in text format if you want to refer to them in the description too. First is structural consistency. This is the kind of the style. So now I'm getting a couple of different options for style. The consistency is similar to what I showed you with the slider, but the higher you go, the more different you're going to get. So this is very similar and it's recommended. The number here is between zero and five. So if I really bump this up all the way to the maximum, I'm going to get something that is very different, right? And if I want it to be more consistent, I need to be closer to zero, right? This doesn't look anything like my composition. It looks like the image, but I want it to look like my video. So I need to go over here. So if you want it to look more like your image, right? This is looking more like your image, but it doesn't really resemble my video in any way. So I'm going to try zero to show you what that looks like. And now this is exactly what I got the first attempt, right? Basically, a medium shot of me sitting there talking. So this is basically what that looks like. So the frame consistency is really important. Since I come from the film world, basically 24 frames makes up a second of video. So if the frames, a frame is just an image, basically like this is a frame. If these images look like each other and don't change that much, the video is going to just look a lot better. So the frame consistency again, is recommended between one and 1.25. So you don't want to really change this one because I found that this is actually doing a really good job to make the whole video coherent and like each frame is matching the rest. So if you mess with this, it's going to have unexpected result. But again, as always, just make sure you play around with these to get the kind of output you want. It's really hard to see, by the way, if you preview this style, because this is showing you one frame. So the frame consistency, you could only really see how much is changing by generating the actual video. Then upscaling, that's just very basic. If you click this, it's going to upscale and make an image a bit higher resolution here. So make sure to check this out. As long as you have an account here, you could remove the watermark from the Gen 1 video creation. And you also have these other options. Let me choose the preset claymation, go to advance. And this one, you could affect the foreground only. So the subject in the foreground or just the background, but it has to have a very clear understanding of foreground and background. I've really not had a re real good experience with this. Sometimes when I click on one of these to just affect the foreground, meaning me and leave my background the same, it doesn't quite do what I want. But I've noticed that if I use different types of videos, especially something with a green screen, it does a much better job. So play around with these two settings to see if you get the result that you want by bas basically separating the foreground and background. And then the compare wipe is really useful because with the compare wipe, you could basically see the before and after once you generate the video. I'll go ahead and generate this video so I could show you this compare wipe option. It's useful because it shows you kind of the before and after. So it's basically showing the original video and it's wiping to the claymation type video, right? So this is kind of useful if you want to get a before and after kind of view, or you could use this in a stylistic way too. compare wipe. If it's checked on, it's going to export the video this way and you could go ahead and download the video right from here. Now all these videos actually get saved. So if I go back one step, you do have an entire projects panel over here and an assets panel. So inside of the assets panel, everything I've created. So this is the tiger, the astronaut here, all these appear over here. So you could always refer back to them or go ahead and upload new assets and basically organize everything inside of your assets folder. So this way they will be available to you with any of the AI tools that we're going to cover here as well as your editing platform inside of runway. You could use any of these assets to edit there. We also have an entire Netflix style learning platform with complete tutorials and courses on the latest generative AI tools. We have an entire runway course as well. I will put a link in the description if you want to learn more about that. I hope you found this video useful. I'll see you on the next video.